just wanted to introduce myself. Anyway, I just wanted to say thanks for the opportunity. I'm ready to help with whatever you need. Just say the word. Yeah, let me show you. Okay.
think we're ready to retake the castle? So what happened to this castle if it was so well fortified? This was long before I joined up, but the story I heard was that some kind of monster came out of the sea and destroyed the fort. A lot of the leaders were killed in that battle, and I guess nobody ever felt it was worth the risk to try to retake it. So, should I have an assault force assemble near the castle? Yeah, let's do this. We'll do some recon and meet you outside the castle. See you there. Just wanted to trade a few things.
Everyone's here, General. There it is. Pretty impressive, huh? Its real name is Fort Independence, but the Minutemen always just called it the castle. Now you can see why I wanted to take it back. Not really. It looks pretty trashed. Once we clear it out, you'll see. Get that radio tower up and running, repair the walls, people will see the Minutemen aren't afraid of a real fight. Our primary objective is to clear the courtyard. That's where we should see the most opposition. The wall on this side is the most exposed. But if we circle around south, we could also reach the main gate. What are we waiting for? Let's just get in there and shoot those lobsters. No. If we split up, we can flank them from both sides. It'll be like shooting fish in a barrel. Why not let them come to us? We set up a firing line on this side and you can draw them out. Well, General, what do you think? Let's not overcomplicate this. Just get in there and hit them with everything we've got. If you say so. All right, people. You heard the general. Let's move out. Try not to draw their attention until we're in. In position. They've been nesting. We're gonna have to take out these eggs, or they'll be back before we know it. Burks like to hold up inside old buildings, so the walls are probably full of them. Sure looks that way. Here's how we're gonna play this. You hold here in the courtyard and take care of any eggs you find. The general and I will clear the walls. Yes, sir. Let's do this, general. I knew it!
All right. Good work, people. But we aren't done yet. The General and I are gonna have... of you. Clear out any remaining Myrlurks or eggs you find. Let's go see if there's anything left of the old transmitter. Nice. Oh, no. Once I power this up, we'll be ready to broadcast. Watching the Minutemen fall to pieces for so long, I just... This is really sad. Now we've got to pay off on what we've started. Bring the whole Commonwealth together and make it last this time. So, you know, back to business. But with Radio Freedom up and running, we can broadcast alerts to you anywhere, anytime. I'll let you know if I hear any settlements that need help. In the meantime, make sure to offer help to anyone that needs it. I can only help our cause.
There we go. Not enough folks value keeping your CPU shut. I'm new around here. I wanted to introduce myself. I wanted to personal. So let me know if you have. Right. Not right now. <laughs> okay. Cleared out that spot you sent me to, and set up a radio beacon there. That's great news. Once folks have some place to call their... I'll let you know if I hear of any... Mm -hmm. In the meantime... Got a favor to ask you, kid. I know it's silly, but I need a chair. Something with a nicer fit for these old bones. Can you do that for me? Sure. Glad to help. Thank you. what you're looking for. I know it. What's up?
close enough, stranger. We're a peaceful farm. We don't want any trouble. Please. You're not worth my time. Hey, whatever you say. Let me tell you, farming ain't easy. Out in the field all day, every day. And every minute of it. Spent watching your back. Farming's hard work. Won't argue with that. Blake Abernathy. You new to the Commonwealth? I'm... Yeah. You could say that. Good to see a new face. How about you? Ever think about working the land? Dig in the dirt all day? No thanks. You're probably a wiser man than me, then. Word of advice, though. If you do start up a farm, be ready to deal with the Raiders. Why do all the hard work when you can just take what you want at gunpoint? What about the Minutemen? If you join up, we can all help each other against the Raiders. You don't say. I thought the Minutemen were all gone. Last time those Raiders hit us, my daughter Mary tried to stand up to them. Now she's buried out back of the house. Only 21 years old, and they shot her down without a thought. So you can understand why I'm glad to hear the Minutemen are back. Although, a bit too late for my Mary. There's nothing worse than losing a child. Believe me, I know. Yeah, it could be a real, monstrous world. I'm sorry to hear you say so. I don't have much to offer, but those Raiders that killed Mary, they took her locket too. It's been in Connie's family for generations. If you could get it back, it'd mean a lot to us. Don't worry. I'll get that locket back for you. Good. Connie feels like it's a part of Mary. I don't think she'll rest easy again as long as it's gone. terminal all you gotta do is ask hey go ahead nothing there now oh. hey you still there I think you can unlock that terminal can't see a damn thing <laughs> did a D 
decent job locking this down. Right. Let's try a slightly different approach. Got it. Grip on yourself. Out there. Oh, it's on. Hey. I got your back. Hide and seek. Where'd that little fucker go? There you are, you little bastard. Games with me, huh? Time's up. Got that locket back for you. You serious? That's great news. Connie's gonna be speechless. Whatever the Minutemen need, you can count on us. We got a decent workshop, and Connie's sure to go with her on the prices at the point of gun. I just want to trade a few things. Valentine walks into my office for a change. What can I say, Piper? You, me, and hard luck all seem to run together like acid rain down an old sewer. You, uh, including your client here in that analogy? So, you two are finally letting me in on this little case of yours. What's the story? Where do you want me to start? The part where Kellogg turned out to be working for the Institute? Or the part where he told me they have Sean. The Institute. Oh boy. I've been investigating these creeps for over a year now. <laughs> the Commonwealth's boogeyman. Feared and hated by everyone. True enough. Sometimes they snatch people in the middle of the night. And sometimes they leave old synths behind to remind us that they're out there. But to this day, there's one thing nobody really knows where the Institute actually is, or how to get in. Exactly. 
But there's one person who has to know, right? The guy who just handed them Sean. Kellogg? Huh. Whatever you're thinking, it doesn't matter. He's dead. Yeah, I knew he wasn't gonna go quietly the moment I saw him. So, a murderer and a kidnapper gets his brains blown out by an avenging parent. Huh. Be a great ending if we didn't still have the biggest mystery in the Commonwealth to solve. Doesn't matter what he knew. I'd kill him again in a heartbeat. Gets his brains blown out. Huh. His brains. You know, we may not need the man at all. You're talking crazy here, Nick. Got a fault in the old subroutines? Look, there's a place in Good Neighbor called the Memory Den. Relive the past moments in your mind as clear as the day they happened. If anyone could get a dead brain to sing, it'll be Dr. Amari, the mind behind the memories. There's no way that could ever work. <clears throat> Stay with me on this. We get a piece of Kellogg's gray matter and take it to Amari. Then we see if she's got the goods to pull this off. Jesus, Nick. Gross. Seriously? I know it's grisly, but what choice do we have? We got no leads. Nothing. That old Merc's brain just might have all the secrets we need to know. Actually, I think I already have something. Kellogg had this thing attached to his head. Cybernetics, huh? We may have just won the lottery. Whether we're riding this crazy brain train or not, we can't all go running across the Commonwealth, so... who's coming with you? I have to go to the memory den either way, if I'm gonna introduce you to Omari. But if you want to head there together, just say so. Anything else you can tell me about the memory den? It's in Good Neighbor, a little slice of trouble northeast of ways. The memory den ain't just a fancy name, it's literal. A lot of people give up all their caps just to relive the good parts of their lives. Over and over. But not us. We're gonna try to dive deep into someone else's mind. I can meet you there or we can head out together. It's you and me, Nick. Let's get going. Don't worry. We're gonna get your boy back. Just a few more steps. While you two are out, I'm gonna do some more research. I'll be here if you need me. down another wayward husband to his mistress? Why? Someone stand you up? You trying that, uh, what do you call it? Evasive language on me? And who are you, huh? Valentine's new dick in training? Not your concern. Oh, it's not, huh? Well, with that attitude, you're gonna be in the market for a little insurance. You better back off, or you're the one who's gonna need insurance. Whoa, whoa, hey, all right. We'll just say your insurance is paid up for now. Okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Time out. Nick Valentine makes a rare visit to town, and you're hassling his friend here with that extortion crap? Good to see you again, Nick. Hancock? What do you care? He ain't one of us. No love for your mayor, Finn? I said let him go. You soft, Hancock. You keep letting outsiders walk all over us. One day, there'll be a new mayor. Come on, man. This is me we're talking about. Let me tell you something. Why'd you have to go and say that, huh? Breaking my heart over here. Now I know you had old Finn handled back there, but a mayor's gotta make a point sometimes. You all right? I'm fine. Thanks for taking care of him. Good. Now don't let this incident taint your view of our little community. Good neighbors of the people, for the people. You feel me? Everyone's welcome.
Sounds like anarchy. The best kind of anarchy. Embrace it, and maybe one day you'll call this little slice of chaos home. So long as you remember who's in charge. Hi. A new player and good neighbor. Hello, little pawn. Welcome to our fun. Whoever this Brotherhood of Steel is, I'm not Excuse buying me. that. Hey. Come in peace, Mark. Brotherhood of Steel. Better stay out of good neighbor. All I'm saying. What, you need something to take the edge off? Fred Allen, Hotel Rexford. Now, I've seen a lot of crazy stuff in my time, but a flying... Well, well, Mr. Valentine, I thought you had forgotten about the me. May have walked out of the den, Irma, but I'd never walk out on you. Hmm. Amari's downstairs, you big flirt. Hey. Here for Amari? She's downstairs. Dr. Amari? Yes. I take it this isn't a social... We need your help, Doctor. I need the memories from a man named Kellogg. But he's dead. I know it's asking for a miracle, Amari. But you've pulled off the impossible before. Are you too mad? Putting aside the fact that you're asking me to defile a corpse, you don't realize that the memory simulators require intact, living brains to function. Some expert you are. I knew this was a waste of time. This dead brain had inside knowledge of the Institute, Amari. The biggest scientific secret of the Commonwealth. You need this, and so do we. Fine. I'll take a look. But no guarantees. Do you have it with you? Here's what I could find. What's this? This isn't a brain. This is... Wait. That's the hippocampus. And this thing attached to it? A neural interface? Ah, those circuits look awfully familiar. I'm not surprised. From what I've seen, all Institute technology has a similar architecture. Go on, Doctor. Mr. Valentine is an older generation synth. But Institute technology being what it is, the brain implant could fit him. But that's an incredible risk to take. We're talking about wiring something to his brain. Don't worry about me, Amari. I'm well past the warranty date anyway. We should try plugging you into a toaster next. Mmm, fresh toast. Uh, it's nice to know that even when I'm about to have a foreign object shoved into my noggin, you find new horrible ways to laugh at my expense. Whenever you're ready, Mr. Valentine, just sit down. If I start cackling like an old grizzled mercenary, pull me out, okay? Let's see here. I need you to keep talking to me, Mr. Valentine. Any slight change in your cognitive functions could be dire. Are you feeling any different? There's a lot of flashes. Static. I, I, I can't make sense of any of it, Doc. That's what I was afraid of. The mnemonic impressions are encoded. It appears the Institute has one last failsafe. There's a lock on the memories in the implant. More problems. Seriously? It's not like anyone has ever done this before. You try making a secret technology work across hardware generations out of spare parts. Just let me think. The encryption is probably meant to keep a single mind from accessing the data. So what if we use two? We load both you and Mr. Valentine into the memory loungers. Run your cognitive functions in parallel. He'll act as a host while your consciousness drives through whatever memories we can find. Nick and I are gonna share a mind? Yeah, I'm not gonna see him in any compromising positions, am I? 
Now, if a smart mouth was all it took to solve problems, we would have found your son by now. Um, uh, no. You won't have to worry about that. The only memories you'll access are the ones in the implant. All right. Let's get started. Just sit down over there and keep your fingers crossed. See you on the other side. Initiating brainwave migration between the transplant and the host. Mnemonic activity coming from the transplant. It's degenerated, but it's there. We're going to load you into the strongest memories we can find. They might not be stable. Just hold on. Can you hear me? Ah, good. The simulation appears to be working, although the memories are quite fragmentary. I'll try to step you through the intact memories and hope we find one that gives us some clue to the Institute's location. There. This is the earliest intact memory I can find. experiencing these memories as Kellogg. This may prove disorienting at first. I was such a dummy back then. What did I know about how the world worked? Mom knew how it was. She wasn't soft, but uh, she loved me in, in her way. And she protected me from Dad. That cost her more than a few beatings. I never knew what happened to her after I left. I didn't want to know. Not then. Dad was either drunk or not around. I guess he must have run with one of the raider gangs, but I never really knew what he did. Don't know why Mom was with him. Maybe at some point in his life he wasn't a complete asshole. This doesn't seem to be what we're looking for. There appears to be another intact memory close to you in temporal sequence. There. Try that one. I was the worst thing that ever happened to... It's gonna be fine. You'll see. I was the worst thing that ever happened to her. If she'd never met me, she'd have stayed in the hub Maybe hooked up with someone who didn't kill people for a living. Probably been happier than she was with me. Almost certainly lived longer. But we don't know anybody here. And now, with the baby? Come on. Whatever made me think that a guy like me should have a daughter? No, I... I never deserved her. Not for one second. Sarah, you've got to give it a chance. I finally got steady work with a good outfit. Nothing like that in the NCR these days. No, I, I'm not saying this was a mistake. I, I'm just... Are you sure these guys know what they're doing? They seem kind of green. I know. But that's where I come in. I thought San Francisco was my chance to start fresh. That was the hot shit. The gunslinger from the hub, rolling into town with the world at my feet. Everybody knew I was the one who'd shot Valdez. And I could write my own ticket to any outfit in town. It all worked out pretty damn well. For a while. Just wait. In a few years, I'll be running my own crew. As soon as I make the connections I need. Then I can give you anything you want. And little Mary, too. I never worried about you before. Must be my mama instincts kicking in. <laughs> Who knew I had those, huh? Come on, you're great with her. And you don't need to worry about me. 
Most of it's just running security for the Shi. A lot of standing around, looking tough. Well, they sure picked the right person for that job. Listen, it's gonna be great here. See this? This is what's gonna keep you and Mary safe. I promise. I know, Connie. I'm sure we're gonna be really happy here. We are. You'll see. That's okay. I got her. Let's keep looking. I'll connect you to the next intact memory. How did you think this was going to end, Kellogg? <laughs> you thought you could just fuck with us, and we wouldn't fuck with you? Just so you know, they died like dogs. And you weren't there to help them. Another memory to try. I'll connect you. Mind if we sit down? Suit yourself. There's always someone who wanted someone else dead. Sometimes just roughed up, but, uh, dead was usually what they wanted. Sometimes they thought they could cheat me. That was usually only when I first arrived somewhere. Didn't matter to me. I just took it as part of the job. A little extra thrown in for free. I always got paid in the end. One way or another. I don't remember much from that time. It all kind of blends together. It was almost always a bar, though. That's universal. I didn't care where I was going. Ended up mostly wandering east. Getting as far away from San Francisco as I could, maybe. So, um, I hear you'll take care of people's problems. Is that right? If you pay me. Oh, we'll pay you. And, uh, you'll do this all by yourself? That's right. We pay you when the job's done. Is that okay? That's the way you want to do it? So who do you want dead? Well, it's like this. There's his family. Lives down the creek a ways. Well, we seem to be getting closer. Try this next one. Mr. Kellogg, I'm glad you decided to meet with me. So, you're with the Institute. I wanted to see for myself if you really... I finally ended up in the Commonwealth. I kind of ran out of road. Plus, I'd come to terms with life. I wasn't going to be stupid enough to get mixed up with caring about other people again. It was just me against the world. And the world had it coming. We existed. First synths weren't all that impressive. I'm good, but I'm not that good. But the Institute could always make more, and kept making them better each time. They still give me the creeps, but you have to get used to them if you want to work with the Institute. We do, as you can see. What do you want? It's come to my... You heard all sorts of rumors about the Institute. But I figured they were just a convenient boogeyman for anything bad that ever happened. They were real, all right. They didn't know anything about operating on the surface. Relied on their synths for everything. They had the resources I needed. 
and I had the expertise they needed. Turned into a permanent arrangement, which suited me just fine. I attention that you've been rather disruptive of our operations lately. This must stop. I do what people pay me to do. If that's a problem for you, I could see only one way out. And what's that, Mr. Kellogg? If I'm working for you, there's no more problem. From what I hear, you can afford me. I don't think you fully understand the situation you're in. I think I do. Very well. B-748, initiate. Impressive. We may have something to talk about after all. Getting warmer. One of these has got to tell us something. We're running out of brain here. Ah. Ah, there's one that looks mostly intact. Connecting now. Manual override initiated. Cryogenic stasis suspended. The eggheads never like taking orders from a... Dirty, contaminated, degenerate like me. But they needed me. And I made sure they knew it. All computers are still working. That's good. Checking through the logs. Hopefully it's all... I was now the Institute's main operator in the Commonwealth. If they needed something done, they came to me. It wasn't usual for anybody from the Institute to come along on a mission, so... This one stood out. I didn't know then who it was we were grabbing from the vault. Of course, neither did they. Not really. Justin, find it. Pod C6, down the hall near the end. I never knew why we didn't just refreeze the rest of them. But we had our orders. <laughs> Guess the old man didn't want so many loose ends. Too bad he left alive the one person he shouldn't have. This is the one. I'm glad I didn't have to kill the kid. I'm not saying I haven't done it, but, uh, I never liked to. And yeah, I guess it did remind me of uh, her. Yeah, I'm a cold-hearted bastard for sure, but, uh, I'm still human. Better this way, though. Better than taking her kid and leaving her alive. Open it. <laughs> Is it over? <coughs> Are we okay? Almost. Everything's going to be fine. Come here. Come no, here. Wait. No, no. I've got him. Let the boy go. I'm only going to tell you once. <laughs> God damn it. Get the kid out of here and let's go. Even then, I knew it was a mistake leaving him alive. I understood that kind of revenge. No one better. But I was cocky enough to assume I could handle some soft pre-war vault dweller. Even if he somehow got thawed out. At least I know those Institute bastards will soon get what's coming to them, too. If he could take me out, they won't be able to hide from him for long. We still have the backup. Cryogenic sequence reinitialized. What's the holdup? I'm almost finished, Kellogg. I just need to confirm. Come on, come on, come on. All right, we're good. I'm, uh, I'm sorry you had to go through that again. I found another intact memory. 
whenever you're ready. Is that your son? This appears to be a very recent memory. So, good news, I think. Wasn't my idea to settle down with the kid in the middle of Diamond City. <laughs> I thought it was a terrible idea, actually. But, it was one of the old man's pet projects, so here we were. Me and the kid. Like a happy little family. I ended up kind of liking it. A reminder of what my life might have been if things had turned out differently. But there's no going back. I knew it was just temporary. It'd be back to normal business before too long. This whole setup in Diamond City was part of some elaborate plan of the old man's. Seems obvious now that we were bait for our friend from the vault. Timing couldn't have been an accident. It's not how the old man works. I wonder if he outsmarted me in the end. Another loose end tied up. Kellogg. It's okay. One, the new breed of synths could easily pass as human. Some of them did. But the Coursers, they weren't built to blend in. They were killing machines, pure and simple. Smarter, stronger, and faster than almost any real human. I'm just glad they were always on my side. One of these days, you're gonna get your head blown off just barging in here like that. Minimizing my exposure to civilians is a priority. Forget I said anything. So what's the big crisis this time? New orders for you. One of our scientists has left the Institute. Left? As in? He's gone rogue. Name's Dr. Brian Virgil. We know he's hiding somewhere in the glowing sea. Here's his file. Wow. Some heads are gonna roll for this. Capture and return, or just elimination? Elimination. He was working on a highly classified program. No kidding. One of the top bioscience boys? Damn. So, I guess you're taking the kid back with you. Affirmative. Your only mission is to locate and eliminate Virgil. You're taking me home to my father? Yes. Stand next to me and hold still. Okay. X688. Ready to relay with Sean. Bye, Mr. Kellogg. I hope I see you again soon. Bye. Teleportation. Now it all makes sense. Nobody's found the entrance to the Institute because there is no entrance. Let me pull you out of there as soon as you're ready. Okay. I don't know what kind of side effects the procedure might have had. No one's ever done this before. How do you feel? I have this burning feeling inside my skull. It's like it's on fire. That's not surprising. All the synapses in your brain have just been pulled apart, connected to someone else, and then pulled back together. I injected you with a large stim pack while I was pulling you out. That should ease things. Are you... Ready to talk about what happened in there? I saw Kellogg's life. 
The man who ruined my family. The man I killed. That's right. He was a human being just like the rest of us. And he had reasons for being what he was. However cruel. How does that make you feel? It's convinced me that I did the right thing. He was a rabid dog. And he needed to be put down. I suppose I can't fault you for that. We're getting off track. The important thing is that we discovered the Institute's greatest secret, teleportation. The only question is, what do we do now? What do you think we should do? Um, let me think. What about that memory involving Virgil, the rogue Institute scientist? If he were alive, we have a common enemy. He might help us. I like it. The memory said the Institute tracked him to the glowing sea. But that seems crazy. A madman would think twice about going there. Why? What makes the glowing sea so dangerous? The name says it all. Radiation. So much that nothing there could possibly live. Nothing pleasant. Navigating radioactive hazards is nothing new. But the glowing sea can kill a man in seconds. That's why it doesn't make sense. Virgil fleeing into that hell. The exposure alone. That's why he's there. To make the Institute think twice about following him. That must be it. He's using the radiation in the glowing sea like a shield, or a cloak. A way to throw them off and be at an advantage. If Virgil found a way to survive there, you'll have to do the same. If you're going to follow him. I'll find a way to get through the rads. Don't worry. Good luck. And be safe. By the way, I unplugged Mr. Valentine first. Removed the implant while you were waking up. He's waiting for you upstairs. Memory Den's not accepting new clients right now, sweetheart. Hey, Valentine. Hope you got what you were looking for inside my head. <laughs> that was right. I should have killed you when you were on ice. You wanna try for round two? Let's go! What? What are you talking about? You sounded like Kellogg just then. Did I? Huh. Mari said there might be some mnemonic impressions left over. Anyway, I feel fine, so let's get going. I'm gonna head out on my own from here, Nick. Good luck out there. You know where to find me. Nick. Time to hit the road? Let's head out. Well, all right. Hey. What's the plan? Hey, let me ask you something. Sure, ask away. It's just, uh, with everything that's happened with you and your, your family, it's a whole hell of a lot to process. I wanted to make sure you're holding up all right. Doesn't really matter. I'm here now. I've just got to deal with that. Good attitude to have. Not the way I felt. It took me a long damn time to get a feel for this place. Thank goodness I found Diamond City. It's got its flaws, sure, but it beats the hell out of anywhere else in the Commonwealth. Of course, when I took up there back when, people were just as scared of the Institute as they are now. Maybe more. The massacre of the CPG was still pretty fresh in people's minds at that point. And folks were still losing sleep over the broken mask. Plenty of people assumed I was just a saboteur, moving in to melt down the reactor or poison the drinking water. But at the time, they couldn't exactly turn me away. Why'd they let you in? Because I'd rescued the mayor's daughter. Gal of about 15. Pride and joy of the mayor back then. A man by the name of Henry Roberts. The young Miss Roberts decided she'd run off with some caravan hand. She'd, uh... <clears throat> known for an evening. 
Turns out the guy was part of a gang of kidnappers. I didn't even know who I was rescuing, just stumbled on a crying girl and four toughs. I took her home and the mayor dubbed me a hero, offered me a place in town. Lots of folks protested and said I was a spy, but he wouldn't have it. Taking up in the city was tricky at first, but I never tried to hide what I was, and people seemed to warm to that. You're not a spy, right? Testing, testing, hello, Institute, can you hear me? Hell if I know. If I am, the Institute's plan to gather intel on all the runaways of the Commonwealth has been going off without a hitch. Was it hard settling in? Yeah, they sure didn't make it easy. I started off doing the jobs no one else wanted. I got more banged up being Diamond City's handyman than I ever did living out in the ruins. But I guess folks never forgot I rescued the mayor's daughter, so they started coming to me when people went missing. Wife runs off with a new paramour and takes the rent money with her? Talk to the synth. An upset father decides moving him and the kids to good neighbor in the dead of night's not the worst damn idea since the bomb? Go get Nick. After a while, the jobs got so backed up, they didn't even ask me to do the handyman stuff anymore. Hell, I was so happy to do it, it was months before I started charging anyone. I never stopped being Nick the synth, but it was Nick the detective folks came to see. It was about then that things, uh, well, things finally started feeling normal. It took me a long time to realize that home is where you make it. And with some time and effort, this place can be home for you, too. That's a long story, but I hope it helps. Want to get moving? I know you all are doing your own thing, but I don't want anyone here to forget what matters. Hey, Daisy. Black you sticking around, you'll need to join a crew. I hear Bobby no Nose is looking. I'll ski oh, the other day. He wishes. <laughs> Hey there, friend. We're in some real trouble. Maybe you can help? I'm with the Minutemen. How can I help? It's these damn greenskins, the super mutants. Whenever they come through, we just have to run away or hide. They take everything they can eat and destroy most everything else. And if they ever took us by surprise, we'd all be dead. We can't live like this. Please, you gotta help us. I'll take care of those super mutants. I promise. I hope so. We didn't know what to do. Hope you ain't one of them since. You're gonna spy on me.
Those super mutants won't be bothering you again. I guess you were the right person for the job, huh? Thanks, friend. By the way, we've decided to support... Mm -hmm. I'm afraid I'm not much use in a fight anymore. But back in the day, folks used to call me Murphy the Mavlin. Hey. You need the sight? It's telling me Mentax will give us the right high for another insight into your destiny. There you go. Ah, that's it. I can feel the sight opening up. You're walking into a sea. But it's not water you're afraid of drowning in. It's something invisible, but radiant. It burns everything in it. But no, I can feel them. There's people calling out to something, chanting. They can show you the way. But they're so hard to read. Be careful around them, kid. <coughs> Don't mind me, kid. <coughs> the cams are just acting up a bit. I'll be fine, eventually. Hi. Apparently the castle's been trying to get you on the radio. Some kind of situation over there. Better go see what's going on. I took care of those super mutants. The settlers were relieved to not have them to worry about anymore. Thank God. Super mutants. Civilians just don't stand a chance against them. As usual, I've got something else for you. Our scouts have found a promising spot for the settlement. But nobody's gonna want to move there until the bug infestation is taken care of. Once you clear it out, set up a radio beacon to let settlers know about it. Before you know it, we'll have a thriving new farm instead of wasteland. We'll take back the Commonwealth, one piece at a time. Hey, General. Excuse me. Ready to talk to me? Who are you? I'm Ronnie Shaw, Commonwealth Minutemen. At least I was. Back before Joe Becker got himself killed and the idiots took over. You were a Minuteman? What? You don't think an old broad like me can fight? I could kick your butt, punk. I'd like to see you try. <laughs> Let's get this over with. <clears throat> <clears throat> Hey there. You know how to throw a punch, I'll give you that. Now that you got that out of your system, can we get down to business? I'd still like to hear what you came to talk to me about. Heard you were trying to get the Minutemen back on their feet. Thought I'd come see the new general for myself. So what's your story? What makes you think anybody even wants the Minutemen back? The Commonwealth needs the Minutemen. People are starting to realize that. I've heard some good things. Wouldn't be here otherwise. 
Now that I'm here, I can see you really need my help. We were doing just fine without your help. Really? I guess you know all about the castle's old armory then. You could have told me about that first thing. I hauled my hiney all the way over here to do you a favor. Least you could do is listen politely. I'm probably the only one who still remembers this. But the castle's armory was located in the West Bastion. This is the door to the armory. Ah, good. Looks like it might still be intact. The door's still sealed. Hey. This is the door to the armory. Ah, good. Looks like it might still be intact. The door's still sealed. Bastion hasn't collapsed. The trick now is finding a way in. I hope you have an idea. Of course I do. If you can't go through, go around. Let's have a look at the northeast bastion. Nothing to report. Stay safe, people. I hope you're finding the broadcast useful. upon him down here in the dark. Explains all the landmines. 
This is, well, was, General McGann. He had your job back when I first joined him. Must have gotten trapped down here when that sea beast attacked the castle. Uh, he did manage to keep the armory secure. I'll give him that much. Ah, guess the uniform is yours now, if you want it. So Geezer doesn't need it anymore. Rest in peace, General. Your fight is done, and the Minutemen live on. No point in getting all sentimental about something that happened 40 years ago. Come on, we're almost through. See if it was worth the effort. General, when you see those shells raining down on our enemies, well, you'll know it was worth it. like you've got everything we need as soon as you on the target. You might want to stand back. Yeah, you know, just in case.
Hello. Now we have the armor repack. This is Radio Freedom, broadcasting all day, all across the country. 